Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ron Ratner with the Northeast Conference, back for our weekly Geico Google Hangout. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com. Today, I couldn't be more excited. I, got, I have one of the NEC's best with me today. I've been waiting a long time to get him on a Google Hangout. Uh, he's in the midst of a record-breaking season, and he anchors the newly minted NEC regular season champions. So they're guaranteed a spot in the postseason. Here he is, one of the NEC's best. How about this for a build-up here? We have Jalen Cannon from the St. Francis Brooklyn Terriers. How you doing, Jalen? I'm fine. Can't complain. Thank you for having me. You got it. Um, we're going to get to your season and uh, put it all in perspective, all the great things the Terriers have done this year. But first, I want to talk a little bit about you and some of the, your accomplishments this year. Um, February 7th, you set the NEC rebound the career record and have since have since obliterated that record up to uh, 1,090 rebounds in a career, most by any NEC player ever, the most by any active NCAA player. Can you even wrap your head around these numbers that you put up in your career? Uh, not right now, not really, but hopefully when it's all said and done, when it's all put together, that I'll, I'll remember it and be um, hopefully a, a champion one day to, to put along with that stuff. Uh, was rebounding always your thing growing up as a kid and then through high school? Is that the thing you did better than everyone else? Uh, yeah, because in middle school, I, I couldn't make a layup to save my life. Uh, I couldn't make a jump shot or maybe even a free throw too. I just always had a knack for rebounding and passing the ball, but now it's mainly rebounding. There's not one coach out there that doesn't need a guy that just get, goes out there and grabs balls off the glass, right? Yeah, not, not everybody's willing to do the dirty work, but you, sometimes you need to do the dirty work just to get the job done. All right, well, there's a coach in the NEC that knows that you can do the dirty work. Is Andy Tool from Robert Morris. This is what he said about you. I'm going to read a quote from him. You'll like this. The hardest thing about game planning for Jalen Cannon is just he's, he's so relentless in his rebounding and the way he posts up and how physical he is. And so that's something you really can't game plan for. You can tell your guys, hey, this guy's going to try to get every offensive rebound on every shot. But if you don't have some players that are in the habit of doing that themselves, it's really hard. It's, it's a hard thing to really turn on. So you hear that. Um, you're not the biggest guy in college hoops. Okay, you're not the biggest guy in this conference. What's the secret of being a successful rebounder and for making it hard for guys like Andy to game plan against you? <laughs> uh, you just gotta um, outwork your opponents. Sometimes you know they might be taller than you, stronger than you. You might have to to use your use your feet to get around them when they try to box you out, or or um, you just time the time the, the the ball wherever the wherever the shot where, wherever you think the shot is gonna come off. You just run over to that spot and try to get the ball. So is that something in your four years that you've gotten better at knowing where the ball is gonna come off the rim? Yeah, I believe I got I got better at that as the time went on because you know when I was younger I I kind I was kind of like in high school I was I was using that method a lot. But, I got better, a lot better over the four years of that. But you got to think it's you got part desire, part technique, right? That's that's the, that's what makes the sort of the robo rebounder the best one out there, right? Correct. <laughs> um, you you pulled down more than four hundred offensive rebounds in your career. That's really an art form. Um, do you take satisfaction in giving your team second chance opportunities? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Coach Breaker always tell, tells me there's points on the board, you know. You know, like early on in my career, uh, my freshman year, I didn't get a lot of shots, so I had to find ways to stay on the floor and create extra shots for our team. So I would just run run to the glass and get a rebound and put it back in or kick it out to one of, one of the shooters. So you're not just a rebounder. Let's remind people here. You have over 1,500 career points in addition to your 1,000-plus rebounds. By the way, only two players have done that in the history of the conference. And for those that don't know, Jalen just won his fifth NEC Player of the Week award. Check these numbers out. 25 points a game, 15 rebounds a game uh, last week. A couple weeks ago, you won a slew of awards. You were the Lou Henson National Player of the Week, the ECAC Player of the Week, the Met Riders. It goes on and on. Um, 
I've been at some of your games this year, and I see you now shooting threes, going out mid-range, popping, you know, splashing jumpers from 15 feet. You look real comfortable at that. Is that something you really worked on over the last couple of years to get better at so you're not just labeled as a rebounder? Uh, yeah. Um, Coach Breaker told me going, um, going into my sophomore year, I think it was in the summertime, he said, I have to keep adding to my game each year to, to become better. So each year I went home and I and I've put in a lot of work with my trainer Jermaine Wilson and also Tume Anderson helped me out and that's my AU coach. So time after time I just put in the work so and it's and it's paying off. What part of your game do you think you don't get enough credit for? That you're better than people think? Uh, <laughs> I would say kind of shooting the balls. You know, some 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 of the defenders now they're starting to learn that I can shoot the ball better than before. But I, I I think like my sophomore year was was really when I when I um, figured out that I could really shoot the ball. So you're the next uh, you're the next Ben Mockford from three point range. I wouldn't I wouldn't take it too <laughs> long. Um. So Glenn uh, Breaker, your head coach, he said this about you recently. He said Jason really worked at developing his game. Now he can step on the floor and make perimeter shots. Can handle the ball some. He's become a very good player. So that's that's always great to hear from your coach. When it's the end of the game, it's the clutch situation, minute to play, tie game. Are you the type that really wants that ball in your hands? You want to take that big shot? Is that what you feel confident in doing? Uh, yeah, if the if the moment is right, I, I would want to take the shot. But if if it's if another guy is hot that night, I would I would definitely let them take the shot because I I believe in my teammates. Do you think that you may not have felt that way as a freshman and sophomore when your offensive game wasn't as refined yet? I, be, I believe so. I, my, my freshman year, I probably wouldn't be that confident, but I would want Steph or Ben to shoot the ball, not, not me. But now it, I, I believe it would be me taking a long shot because I have a lot, a lot of confidence. What's the biggest shot you've ever hit? What's the most clutch thing you've done in your four years at St. Francis? I'd probably say um, maybe my, um, the last layup we made against Miami last year, I, it, was like, it was like the game-winning layup. It wasn't at the bu buzzer, but it was one of the last last shots. That win over an ACC opponent in the opening game of your junior season, was that the biggest win that you've ever had? Uh, to this date so far, yes. Hopefully there will be another one. There we go. Let's get into your basketball. Let's get into your hoops background a little bit. Were you always into basketball growing up, or did you have other sports that you excelled at and loved playing? Uh, I played football time to time, but... I I started out as a, a baseball player when I was younger. Me and my brother, I was a pitcher and he was the catcher and then I also played first base too. I used to I used to always hit every time I was up to bat, it was either a home run or a triple. It was it wasn't a strikeout or for like a single, it was always a home run. Uh that was my that was my passion back then. It was um it was baseball. And then I got into basketball in about seventh and eighth grade. And then that's really when it started kicking off in like ninth grade when I started hitting like a growth spurt. So why'd you give up baseball? Just because you grew so much for basketball? Yeah, and a lot of people were always talking about my father being a um, a good basketball player in high school, and I I kind of wanted to like live up to that and get past him a little bit. <laughs> what? Who was your basketball idol growing up? Um, I would say Shaq. <laughs> I like Shaq. There you go. Um, you played JV as a freshman in Allentown at William Allen High School. Um, as a sophomore, the story goes, you only scored a couple points all season. Um, heading into your junior year, did you were you still confident that you could become um, a better player? Did you think maybe I'm not maybe I'm not good enough? Uh, there was a little a little doubt at, at the at the beginning, but I I started growing and then I started growing into my body junior year and then. My coach, uh, Doug Snyder, did a very good job of talking to me, telling me that I could be a very good player. I just got to keep working hard. And it kind of it kind of sinked in because every day I would either go to the park and play play full court or, or get up shots. And then it just, it, just, it just developed me. So your junior year, it started to come together. Senior year, averaging 20-10 range, all-state player. Then comes your um, senior year, the playoffs. Okay, you guys are playing in the district championship game. You're playing Liberty Rival, right? Rival school? Yeah, correct. Okay, so 
you're down at the half, you come into the locker room. Now I'm just, this is the story out there. that You told your teammates, we're going to win this game, we're going to win the title, don't worry about it. And you finished that game with a 22-20 and 20 spot, which is pretty incredible. Your team rallied to win. What a great way to end that high school career of yours. Do you, career, do you still get goosebumps thinking about that day? Uh, I do because I I kind of feel like it's it's gonna be like my um my senior year in college because we started off slow and then we picked it up. You know, guys guys were arguing in the locker room because because we were down. They didn't they didn't believe we could win this game still, even though we were down. It was like five or four or something like that. And I just told everybody to set, relax, settle down. We're gonna win this game. Now, when you were in high school. Was that something you – was it a common thing, um, saying things like a leader? Were you the leader type or were you the quiet type? And that was out of character for you, what you did in that game. Oh, yeah, that, that was definitely out of character. And in, in high school, I was I was silent. I didn't – I barely talked at all. But now I can't – you know, time to time I can't keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Is it more – are you more comfortable now being one of the leaders of, of the team the last year or two at St. Francis? Yeah, I've learned a lot um, from from a lot of the older guys and and a lot from the coaching staff. They they told me I got to be more of a vocal leader. I mean, I lead by example, but I have to be a little bit more vocal. And and each year you can see that. What was there a player when you were a freshman or sophomore on on your team that you sort of looked up to and took your leadership cues from as you as you got older? Yeah, I would say my freshman year, I, I was looking up to Justin Newton. He he always had us like in the right spots and everything. So I I just I just took um what he did and I just ran I kind of ran with it. So let's talk about why you came to St. Francis, Brooklyn. Why why the choice? Why come from Allentown to Brooklyn to continue your your education and play ball? Uh, I like I like I like the school where it was at. I like I like the city because Allentown is kind of similar to Brooklyn in some cases. Cause people from New York move to Allentown all the time, and and also the staff here and they all made me feel like family. They all made me feel like they wanted me here because Coach Breaker he always came to my practices and he always came to my games. It was was a surprise because even even when I committed here, he would always come by to check how I was doing. So it made me even feel more comfortable coming here. What was it that you that you think? Uh, Coach Breaker and his staff saw in you that led them to offering you a scholarship. Uh, uh, definitely was rebounding because they needed a rebounder. Because I, I heard one of their guards were was their leading rebounder at like six a game, and in my mind I was thinking I was like, oh, I got a, I got a chance to become uh, a good rebounder here maybe. And he also seen that I had some athleticism, but he 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 knew I was undersized, but he he knew what he was getting, so. He um he really invested in me and I thank him very, so very much for um recruiting me and and making me a better player and a better person than I am today. When you were in high school and especially the years where you you may have struggled a little bit and you hadn't found yourself as a player, did you was getting to Division One your goal? Did you think it was an attainable goal? At one point I didn't, but as as the years went on, I I, I really believed in myself and I and I seen myself playing and um in college and getting to the NCAA tournament, thinking about playing playing against Duke and and um, Kentucky like that. That's great. Well, tell me a bit about Coach Breaker. Is first of all, what makes him so special as a coach? He's he's not he's not only about basketball. He's about um he's a, he's, a, he's a big people person. You know, a couple couple weeks ago we went to this um this place. It's like a church. It's, it's called St. Ephraim's. It's for um, kids with that have cancer, and we we took out um, a day and we um we played games with them, we um we did some drills with them, you know, defensive slides, maybe shooting, but he he teaches us a, us a lot about that. It's more than it's more than out, it's more out there than just basketball. Being a, he believes in like being a good person, so I I will always take that I'll take that to the grave with me. That that that's forever gonna mean mean something to me. You really seem to be part, from what everybody tells me at St. Francis, you're really part of the fabric at St. Francis, part of the culture at the, at the, at the college. What makes St. Francis, Brooklyn, to you, such a great place to go to school? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big family here. You know, it's a small school, 
but everybody knows each other and they make you feel welcome here. So that that that's why I love it here. They all make me feel welcome and it feels just like a, a big family. You can't ask for anything more than that, right? To spend your four years. Nope. You can't ask for more than that. Um let's talk about the season. How did it feel Saturday when you guys uh, finally you clinched the NEC regular season championship, the top seed? What was the locker room like after the game? Uh, it was a, it was kind of mixed emotions. Guys were happy, but you know, at the end of the day, this only secures you um, uh, postseason bid. But that could all change in one game. You know, we had to enjoy it until until um, until the next day, and then get get ready for practice on on Monday. Well, the media has hopped on board lately. Um, you guys have been documented in stories and the Post and the News and the Times and USA Today. And everybody always mentions that St. Francis is one of the five schools that has never reached the NCAA tournament. I'm sure you've heard this a million times. Now you're hearing it one more time. Uh, what would it mean for you to be part of that first team that breaks through? You know, it's always going to be remembered by everybody, especially in New York. I mean, it will, it will mean a lot to me, especially that I'm a senior. And, and, and everybody in the school will remember for as long as you can, you can tell the story. It, it will mean a lot to uh, the staff, the coaches, even our walk-ons. Our walk-ons, our walk-ons are, the, are the foundation of our program. <laughs> they, they keep us up. That's great. So yeah, you could be you could be one of the trailblazers, one of those names that's always remembered. If you guys um, if you guys win it all, that must be cool when you think about it down you know down the line. If you guys were the ones to win it, that you and your teammates now will be the ones always remembered for future uh, future teams. Yeah, that that would be pretty cool to be remembered like that. How are you handling all this sudden media attention? Is it? Are you enjoying it, or are you just? Are you kind of like, I I think I want to move on and just concentrate on the games. Uh, I'm enjoying it, but also I just want to move on to the games. But it's it's fun, you know. It's my senior year. You gotta you gotta enjoy the ride. You know, you're not you're not you're not gonna have this mo these moments forever. That's a great way to look at it. That's awesome. Uh, let's talk. I got to go back to something not so happy last year in the playoffs. The Mount game, you lost a big lead out in the quarterfinals. Now, you said this at NEC Media Day, this is what you said about that game. I still have a clip on my phone of Mount St. Mary's on ESPN hitting that buzzer beater. I look at it once in a while to remember what happened so I can use it as motivation to come back this year and possibly try to win the NEC championship. I still have a bitter feeling in my stomach from that. Wow. Did that game bring your team closer together in the offseason? Uh, yeah, it did. You know, we always talk about it time to time, but not too much. We got to focus on this year and, and not live in the past. But I believe that it has brought us a lot closer, you know, because we were up about 11 with a minute left. And it just just shows that you could lose any game at any given time, no matter what, in this conference, because there's not that much separation. And and a, lo a lot of us have learned from it. And we, we speak to the, um, the newer guys and, and they listen, they listen very well. So knowing that there's such a fine line between winning and losing and the parity is so great in this conference, and knowing that it takes one bad game to kind of take the whole season of what you did and it could end, end your season as far as going to the NCAA tournament, has that sharpened your focus in practice and in games and, and made you guys like laser sharp in trying to do everything perfectly? Yeah, that 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 sharpened us a lot. You know, me and Brent, as as senior leaders, you know, we we always bring bring us together and and talk about it once in a while. And we say one we could we started off 0 five and we could have ended 0 five this year. You know, one game can change a whole season. Like it's really it really made us sharpen up and practice a lot. You know, we're we're really getting after it in practice. Taking we're we're um. We're doing a lot of drills to um, handle the ball, so we so we don't turn it all over so much at the end of the games, stuff like that. I'm I'm glad you brought up the 0 and 5 start because now you look at your team. There's 20 wins. You won eight in a row. Regular season champs. But it, back in November, I know you were playing some tough competition. I'll, I got to give you that. But 0 and 5 start. Was there any doubt on the team? Uh, what caused the turnaround? Uh, I don't I don't believe there was any doubt. 
I mean, we had seven new guys out of like thirteen or fourteen, and that's half. That's half of your roster. It takes time. They're they're from they're from high school, JUCO, and and one player from Iceland. So it's gonna take time to for them to adjust to the college level, and um, yeah, that, that that's what I would say. But there was no there was no there was no doubts because you can't win. Uh, you can't get a bid in the um. And an out of conference schedule, you can only get it during um, conference schedule. So, you know, we 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 learned from our the beginning of the year, and we just ran, we just took it took it on from there. So you, the Terriers are in first place for a reason. Obviously, if you don't get to fourteen and two without doing some things, you know, at at a, at a high level. Um, what is it that St. Francis does better than the other teams in the NEC that's allowed you to have such a successful season? What's your bread and butter? Uh, we rebound the ball a lot, <laughs> and um, and I think our defense really really helps. What do you need to do better though to ensure that you win those three games in March? What's Coach harping on at practice every day? Uh, take care of the ball, continue to rebound, and make your free throws. That, that's that's all that needs to be done. So you came in at a time with Brent. You mentioned Brent Jones before. You guys have gone through your four years together. I remember watching your first game against Seton Hall when, when you know, you were just starting out and it was a great game, overtime game. Uh, both of you contributed in that game. And I remember thinking at that point, boy, Glenn's got some good recruits coming in here. I think that these guys can, can do something. How has it been growing your game? while at the same time watching Brent blossom into a star player? Uh, I, I, I like Brent, Brent's game a lot. You know, He got a lot of assists, and I thank you for him for passing me the ball. <laughs> but I really like his game. Over the years, you can see a, a big change in his game from his freshman year when he used to turn the ball over a lot to his senior year where he barely turns over the ball. And, and, and he, could really sh he could really score the ball now because he, he used to be a passer, but now his role is like, it changed a lot, but but he still is the same player that he is. He he takes a lot of smart shots now that he in in his first year that you would kind of question like oh, but he I, I love watching his game. He's he's a great player. Is there an unspoken chemistry between the two of you after four years? Uh, does he know where to get you the ball? Uh, yeah, he he put he places me in the right spots to score. You know, he knows he knows when I'm. When I'm trailing a play and then he'll pass it off, he he doesn't even have to look at me. He I just know that he's gonna pass the ball and we will just connect on that type of level. I think that uh, one thing that St. Francis has going for it is Andy Fall. I think he's a real game changer in this conference because of his length and his defensive abilities. You got a you have a rim protector that not everybody else has. Tell me about his development from last season to this season. I mean, he he's he's contributed a lot, like. From last year, he, he blocked a lot of shots to even this year to even add him to his game. He got a little jump shot. He got some more post moves. But his his shot blocking ability is like like no other. It's like he's six nine on the court. It's like it's he makes teams like think about even like taking it to the rim. Like maybe let's take a three point or something like that. But he makes you, he definitely makes you think twice. And in practice, it's just a battle against him, you know. He just makes me better. How often is he swatting your shots into the front row in uh, in practice? Uh, I try not to let him block any of my shots. I try to make it a little bit more difficult for him to, to make him even better on defense. But, you know, time to time he'll catch me. He'll go into the bleachers or maybe even out, out to um, Remsen Street. <laughs> That's a good line. Um, we're talking about the inside. Let's talk about the outside. So you lost uh, Ben Mockford to graduation, one of the NEC's best uh, three-point threats. You sort of fill in his role by committee now. Um, do you feel comfortable in your team's ability to stick shots from the perimeter? Uh, yeah, Ben. Ben was a great shooter, but everybody is not giving our other guys enough credit because there's guys like Glenn and Brent and Tyreek and Kevin and Lowell is even making some shots now. So I, be I believe that guys are starting to get in the gym more and, and make down sh knock down shots, and I feel comfortable with them with them shooting it. I'm glad you mentioned Glenn. Glenn Sanabri, a freshman guard out of Staten Island. How big has his maturation over the last four or six weeks or so been to this team? Uh, it's been real big. He hit, he hit a lot of tough shots the past couple weeks that you would never think a freshman would do. You would 
kind of think he's like a sophomore or junior. Like he's very comfortable, and and I'm glad Glenn Breaker was able to get him here, and he's helped out a lot. I really like his game. He's going to be a very good player down the road. Let's talk a little bit about your rivalry with LIU. The NEC is a special place because you have these two teams a mile apart. You don't really see that anywhere else. Um, the Battle of Brooklyn, okay? Uh, I was at it this year. You guys finally got them this year. Uh, tell people who may not understand how big that game is to you and the guys down the road at LIU. It's, it's like another world war, you know. <laughs> guys, these guys aren't too far from us, you know. So time to time, we'll see them like walking down the street. We'll say what's up, but in that game, where there's, there's there's no friends, and it, it means a lot. What? Let's talk a little bit about the NEC. You've been through it for four years, so I can pick your brain a little bit. Who are some of the toughest guys you've had to match up against in your four years? Which ones really made you go out and work hard? There's a couple. There's a lot of guys. There's Alex Francis. Um, Julian Boyd, Jamal Lassauer, Ken Horton, Earl Brown, Drakeford. There's, there's a lot of tough guys. The list goes on. It's not easy game to game. There's always someone out there for you. The, nothing comes easy in this conference. <laughs> What's the toughest place to play when you go on the road? I'd say Robert Morris and Bryant. And the crowds there. Even Mount St. Mary's, too. Oh yeah, they'll 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 go they'll get after you a little bit out there, right? Yeah, they definitely will. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna name a couple teams that are contenders in the NEC this year. Tell me what comes to mind. Robert Morris, Lucky Jones, and Andy Tool. Bryant, Diami Starks. He's tough when he gets hot, right? When he, when he gets hot, he gets hot. What about the Mount? Tell me how challenge. I know you've had two. Tough game. The Mount, they picked you off down in Emmitsburg, and then you came back late to beat them up in Brooklyn Heights. What what is what is what kind of problems does that team pose for you? They cause big problems for a lot of teams because when when they when they press and they they steal the ball, they can they can really get it going because they could start hitting three pointers off them presses, and it, it causes big problems. You know, you if you have somebody that could take care of the ball, then then you're set. But they cause big problems on that that mayhem. That Mount Mayhem is crazy. <laughs> All right, so winning the regular season title means you have home court advantage as long as you stay alive in the NEC tournament. How important was it for you, for, for, for your team, to know that to to I to aspire to getting all those games at home at the Pope Center? Uh, it means a lot, you know, you know. The crowd really can get into it. You know, there's less travel for us, so. I believe that's a big factor right there is the traveling part because I don't I don't believe there's that many days of rest if you advance in the tournament and that can take a toll on your body if you have to travel from from like Pittsburgh or or um, Emmitsburg and stuff like that so I think that's a big factor right there. How does it feel when there's a packed house at the Pope? Small little venue, everybody right on top of you. When you walk in and you you can you feel that energy in the crowd? Yeah, you, feel, you definitely feel the energy. I felt like I was playing at, at Syracuse one time with 20, 22,000 or whatever it was that one time we played there. <laughs> it gets really loud. All right, let's switch gears. Um, we're almost done here. I wanted to ask you a few other things. Um, down the line, I assume you want to play professionally, correct? Yes. Uh, now, you're majoring. What's your major? Business management, sports management? Uh, communi communications. Oh, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. That's okay. right. The website's wrong. <laughs> It's I we I sw I switched it up my sophomore year. <laughs> All right, so uh, down the line when you're done, hopefully playing professionally, what is it that you like to do? Uh, I I know how to make um magazine covers, so hopefully one day I can I, you can see me making magazine covers for like ESPN or something like that. So you're a talented graphics art arts guy. A little bit. <laughs> I got some talent on that. I got to see some of this work here. I got. I might get some. I I might need somebody to help me out. <laughs> I'll help you one day. All right. What's your, at St. Francis? What's your favorite class you've taken in your four years? Uh, everybody doesn't like IT, but I like I like IT. I'm a I'm a big IT person. It's it's kind of fun. I learned a lot in that class. Who's your favorite professor you've had? Who do you want to shout out there? There's a bunch. I like to shout out um the whole staff at St. Francis. I love them all. <laughs> All right, last last question. 
what's give me a hobby what's something that you do what's surprising some surprising hobby people might not know about what do you like to do uh, I like to travel travel on in New York I like to visit new places there you go I mean, there's plenty to do you're not gonna run out of things to do in New York yeah, it's, 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 there's a lot to do in New York you can never run out of things in New York because it's so it's so big all right so maybe if you're out there, fans, maybe you'll see Jalen Cannon walking through the streets of New York. You'll get to see Jalen Cannon this Thursday on MSG Network and Fox College Sports because you know what? LIU, St. Francis, Brooklyn, going at it one more time this year. This time uh, at LIU, 7 o'clock, so we got a TV game. Then your regular season finale, you got to go up to Bryant. Well, as you said, tough place to play. Always tough place. 4 p.m. on NEC Front Row, and that will do it for the regular season. After that, you'll get to see Wednesday, March 4th, at the Pope Center. We don't know who you're going to be playing yet, but you know you'll be playing at home in the NEC tournament. Uh, best of luck, Jalen. Um, I'll see you on Thursday, and uh, best of luck for your the remaining part of the regular season and into the playoffs. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right, today's... Google Hangout was brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes or more can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Please visit GEICO.com. We'll see you next time on our GEICO Google Hangout.